Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're gonna to talk about an intriguing problem and present two solutions to it that are completely different than each other, but both that illuminate ways to solve complicated equations from perspectives that are a little bit different than the standard ones. So the problem asks to determine all real values of x for which the square root of two minus root two to the x plus the square root of two plus root two to the x is two to the x. All right, so to start off, one thing we'll do is rearrange things so that we have a constant to work with somewhere. And one way to do that is by dividing by two to the x. And since we have radicals here, it'll be convenient to write this as root four to the x. So we know what's gonna be engulfed into the arguments that are inside of the radicals here. So if we do that division, we'll get the square root of two minus root two over four raised to the x plus the square root of two plus root two to the over four to the x is one, is the equation we're working with. All right, um, so this will be our starting point for both solutions. Let's dive into the first solution to start with. So for the first solution, what we're gonna do is give this argument a name. We'll call it B for base and analyze this base a little bit. So first we notice that as a positive number, two is greater than root two, so this is strictly greater than zero. At the same time, this numerator is strictly less than two, so this fraction is less than a half. I'm just gonna observe that it's less than one. Moreover, if we look at the base inside of the radical here, this number, two plus root two over four, plus this number, two minus root two over four, is one. So this number here is one minus b. And since b is between zero and one, one minus b is also between zero and one as well. All right, so we can rewrite this left-hand side as being b to the, well, square root b to the x, which is b to the x over two, plus similarly one minus b to the x over two equals one. And b is this constant number here. We're trying to find all values of x that satisfy this equation. Now one way to approach this is to think about the left-hand side as an actual function of x and asking when that function achieves the value one. So I'll write this here as f of x and ask the question, when is f of x equal to one. Now one way to think about addressing a problem like this is to ask if we understand any properties of the graph of this function, if we graphed it as y equals f of x. Okay, so since z b is between zero and one strictly, when we raise b to different powers, as our powers get larger, b to that power is gonna get smaller. So the, this piece of the function f of x, b to the x over two, is actually a strictly decreasing function. For example, if b was a half, half to the exponent five is a lot bigger than half to the exponent a million. Half of the exponent a million is tiny. And similarly, because one minus b is also between zero and one, this piece of the function is also decreasing. So f of x is actually a decreasing function. So what does that mean for us? Well, what that means is if we're asking for values of x for which f of x is one, there could only be at most one such value because after that the function decreases. So we know there's only at most one solution to this equation here. So the question is, can we hunt for what that solution is? Well, one way we could get a solution is Noticing b plus one minus b itself is one. So if you make the exponents one, we'll get equality here. And we can do that by setting x equal to two. So x equals two is a solution, and it's the only possible solution because f of x is a decreasing function. All right, cool. So that's an interesting solution that looks at the problem graphically. The next solution is gonna be a completely different approach 
that also illuminates something interesting about the problem at hand. If you like what you see so far though, click the like button, and if you want to see more videos like this and approaches like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications. All right, so now we'll go ahead and jump into our second solution, which uses a completely different approach, but starts off with the same observation. So I'll rewrite again that this is two minus root two over four to the x plus two over root two, two plus root two over four, the square root to the x equals one. Okay, so in this solution, what we're gonna do is analyze the arguments again. So this b value here, two minus root two over four. I want to rewrite this as a half minus root two over four. Now root two over four looks close to a trigonometric number. So maybe trigonometry might help us in some way recognizing that fact. If we factor this into a half with a half taken out, we get one minus root two over two. And root two over two is both cosine pi over four and sine pi over four. Now the thing is, we're gonna be taking the square root of this value, so it would be convenient to write this in terms of a trigonometric value that'll make this entire expression a perfect square, so that when we take the square root, we get some trigonometric value. And a convenient choice for this is the cosine of pi over four, because the cosine pi over four can be represented as two cosine squared of pi over eight minus one, or one minus two sine squared pi over eight. Now, because we're subtracting off the cosine pi over four, it'll be convenient to use the expression one minus two sine squared pi over four, or pi over eight, so that when we subtract off the ones, they go away. So using this formulation, we get that this entire expression is sine squared pi over eight. And so this number here, because it's positive, is sine pi over eight. So we can completely rewrite this argument here as sine pi over eight. Now, by a similar type of calculation, two plus root two over four is doing the same thing we did here up to this point, one half times one plus cosine pi over four. And now we'll use the double angle formula for cosine, which gives us as this is two cosine squared pi over eight minus one which is cosine squared pi over eight. And so the thing in this argument here is cosine pi over eight. Okay, so overall we can rewrite the equation that we're dealing with as sine pi over eight to the x plus cosine pi over eight to the x equals one. And we're finding values, of, asking for values of x that satisfy this equation. This is pretty neat already. We've turned this entire problem into something that looks trigonometric. Okay, so we do know one solution that will work, which is x equals two. And the reason is that when x equals two, this is a trigonometric identity for with the pi over eight substituted in the argument for sine and cosine. In general, the sine squared of any angle plus the cosine squared of that angle is one. And now the question is what happens beyond the values x equals two. So what we'll do is find a convenient way to factor uh, these out. So what we'll do is write this as sine pi over eight squared times 
sine of pi over 8 to the x minus 2 plus cosine pi over 8 squared times cosine pi over 8 to the x minus 2 equals 1. And ask ourselves, for values of x that are not 2, what solutions could we possibly have? Okay, so first let's suppose that x was strictly greater than 2 and satisfied an equation like this. Since sine pi over 8 is strictly between 0 and 1, if we raise it to an exponent that is positive because x is greater than 2, this value here is going to be strictly less than 1. Right? For example, if this, is, this value is not half, but let's say it was half, if we raised it to, let's say, the power 1, we'd get a half. The power 2, we get a quarter. Similarly, this value right here is strictly less than 1 as well. So we have sine squared times something less than 1 plus cosine squared times something less than 1. So the sum of this, these two quantities is going to be strictly less than sine squared pi over 8 plus cosine squared pi over 8. But that is 1. So this entire thing would have to be less than 1. And so we wouldn't have a solution that would work in that case, no matter what value of x we pick greater than 2. Okay, but the same thing would happen if we chose values of x less than 2. If x is less than 2, then this exponent is negative. So if the base is less than 1, this thing will become greater than 1. And this will become greater than 1 as well. And so the entire expression we would have here would be greater than sine squared pi over 8 plus cosine squared pi over 8, which would make this greater than 1 as well. So there's no solution to this equation here other than the value x equals 2. Okay, so an interesting problem that illuminates two completely different approaches that are possible with a problem like this. One, analyzing this as a function of x in order to figure out what values of x will make the equation hold. And another, recognizing that the arguments involved look like something trigonometric and then exploiting that to represent this as a trigonometric equation that then lets us solve in order to determine what x is. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click the like button. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. And click the bell button for notifications on future videos.